One of the great things this year was being able to see how teams and events across the nation were able to pivot in a year where traditional fundraising didn't work out as well. I know for me, being able to see um, events jump to take that emotional side of the luminaria and turn it into a drive-through luminaria, which most often we don't think about something being powerful like that. But seeing the different events uh, have incredible experiences where people were able to come through and have that motivational, but really that emotional time as well. Um, I saw Yellowstone in Montana have a very powerful event where they were able to draw people together and give them that experience as best they could in this time where people were able to, to remember those they've lost. Seeing teams be able to celebrate their survivors, being able to do porch drop-offs and one-on-ones where they were able to give that extra special, um, that emotional side of Relay where we can't do it face-to-face -face right now. I look at teams um, or events, excuse me, like Virginia Tech that really turn each day as a different way to be able to connect with their relayers, whether it was Mission Monday or Why I Relay Wednesday. And they get to see and share those stories and make it a powerful experience, uh, tying the mission of the society to what we do as fundraisers. I know for me personally, um, I got to participate in one of these transitioned events. The top team in the nation, New Core Steel Decatur from the Relay for Life of Morgan County in Alabama, um, has a fundraiser called Cycle the South. And I'm gonna invite Karen to speak a little bit about it. But I just wanna tell you that this event happened a month after my brother died from brain cancer. And I got to ride more than 340 miles from Washington State um, where I didn't get to participate in the actual ride between the two Hope Lodges in the South. But I got to be able to cycle through my emotions. But I just wanted to, I wanna thank you, Karen, for what you did. This jersey that I'm sporting um, is because I decided to raise $1,000 for her event um, in Mike's memory. And it was something for me that was a way to fight back in a year where I had so little control over everything, everything <laughs> at all. Um, and it was just an incredible opportunity for me to be able to take my emotion and channel it into fundraising so that others don't have to hear those words that we did, you have cancer. So Karen, I wanna just welcome you to this. I wanna ask you, tell me, can you explain to everybody a little bit about what it was like to transition this event from an in-person bike, bike ride across several states to a virtual one? How'd you do it? Well, I, we actually had to pivot um, most of our events. We do, you know, as a top team, we raise a lot of money through big face-to-face -face events, our golf tournament, our 5K, our Cycle the South event, um, and all of them had to change. And so if we were going to do what we normally do, we had to sit down and figure out, think outside of the box, get outside of our comfort zone and figure out how can we make this work in a world where we can't be face to face. Um, and Cycle the South was a great example. Um, you know, normally it's a four day ride. We're with each other on top of each other for four days, for four long days. And um, we just, we couldn't do it. We couldn't safely figure out a way uh, to, to have the event. So we started looking at ways, how can we keep riders engaged if we're not face-to-face? -face? How can we incentivize them to keep raising money, even though they're not gonna get to see the survivors and the Hope Lodges and um, you know all the things that we do along our, our little four-day journey, how can we keep them engaged and still keep them raising money? Um, so we did decide to, um, you know, turn it into a virtual event, have them document their day-to-day -day rides and still engage with us. And then we did, you know, a follow-up with a video of, of all the uh, different places that people were riding their 340 miles. And um, one, of the, one of the things that gave us the opportunity to do is open up that event and invite people who normally can't take five days out of their life and come play with us. Um, so people like you from Washington who can't just drop everything and come and ride bikes for five days, four days, <clears throat> were able to participate. And it was something we had never thought about before. And why? I don't know, because it was a great addition to our event and we will continue to do it for, um, even though this year we will be live, um, but we will continue <laughs> to have that virtual portion because it added so much to the event. Um, you know, it added not only funds, but it added new people and, and, you know, people got to see what we're doing 
even though they they haven't been part of the face to face in the in the past. Um, so it it was a great opportunity for us. Again, um, you know, we, even with things like our golf tournament. Um, while we were able to actually get together for our golf tournament and do it face to face, things had to change because we normally pile 288 people into a small window of time golfing and we couldn't get that many people together. It just, it wasn't safe to get. So we had to do things like stretch it over two days and uh, turn our, our um, auction, which is normally there on site into a virtual auction, which actually did us good. We used the Greater Giving site and uh, did a virtual auction, and it actually drove the prices up because people from around the country were donating on, uh, you know, bidding on these items, um, not just the golfers that were there, um, even though alcohol does help on that, uh, you know, getting those prices <laughs> driven up. <laughs> but it was nice to be able to invite other people to experience that. Um, so, you know, just learning to think outside the box, changing your event to fit what you, you know, what is now possible um, was key to our success. Um, and another thing I encourage people, you know, we heard a lot over the course of the year about, gosh, people are having a rough time. It's, you know, businesses are suffering and people are, are struggling financially. We're not going to ask them for help. We're not going to ask them to do this year, you know, this, this year or that because we're, we know they've been um, having a rough time. And I, I, you know, I've preached this with my team for the you know, 20 years we've been doing this. Um, don't ever make decisions for people. Um, make the ask, let them decide if they can or cannot help because you would really be surprised at how many people, even though they may have struggled financially, they may have put 20 bucks back for a luminary just for this situation and don't, don't not give them that opportunity to help out. Um, so that's, that's kind of all I have to encourage people this year. Well, I know you make a really great point because I think about after Mike died and people weren't asking me to do anything. And I, when I realized um, Nicole was talking and she said, you know, we, we should think about doing this. And that was something I needed personally to be able to say, you know what, I can do something right now, even though it feels like my world is caving in around me. This is something I can positively do. <laughs> And it meant so much to be able to, to have that chance. And if she hadn't been talking about it, I don't know that I would have had that push to move forward. So I am grateful for that. You know, and Karen, I see you, you are always, there's always something on Facebook, you're always talking about fundraising and what you can do for ACS. What do you think for people that are jumping into this for the first time? What, are, what do you recommend like fundraising on Facebook? What do you recommend to be able to do to help jumpstart that, that social media side or that online side of giving? Well, I mean, I, I mean, everything is turning virtual these days. So um, online is a great way to push your fundraisers out, and it gives you a wider scope of of who you're going to touch with that fundraiser. Um, you know, we we've seen a lot of changes happen in ACS, um, you know, throughout the year, and there is a huge group of, of relay volunteers out there that are willing to help each other, and it's a, um, I mean, it's, it's a community that if you have any questions, if you have anything you need, you know, reach out to these folks and ask them, um, you know, for help because we're all willing to help each other raise money. I'm not hoarding all the money, you know, I can and, and not sharing my ideas. I'll give you anything we do and, and help you make it successful. Um, and everything can be scalable to a team, regardless of, you know, yeah. a lot of people look at our team and go, oh my God, $400,000, how, I, I don't even want to hear her because there's no way I can do any of that stuff. Well, let's, let's start by saying yes. Let's say we can do it and figure out a way to make it happen um, before we start discounting things that we think are not possible. I <clears> love <throat> that. I think that that's one of the great things here. When we look at, uh, saying yes and saying, you know, I can choose to do something and I will choose to do it. Um, I look back at this last year and it had a lot of craziness in there. Um, I'm going to ask you in a second, what was your highlight, your favorite highlight of this year? For me, um, the cycle of the South was an incredible part of that. Um, the two points this year that were great, were seeing all the luminaria for my brother, the night of his funeral at our event. 
and being able to fight back and choose to do that. My team, uh, we raised a little under 50,000 this year um, in choosing to still fight back in a way that we could. And we're just ready to jump out of the gate this year in 2021, hit our million dollar cumulative fundraising as a team. So I'm thrilled for that. Karen, what was your number one highlight for this year? Uh, probably for me, it had to be our golf tournament. Um, just because we had had to cancel everything up to that point, we had postponed it three different times, trying to get it to a place where we could do it safely and a way we could do it safely. Um, and then we finally got to have it in October. And, you know, while it looked very different than it has in the past years, um, it was, it was amazing. And the people came out and were so excited to get to be face to face that, Honestly, they gave a lot more than they ever have in the past. We have fewer people because of the pandemic, but the but they gave a lot more than they ever have in the past. And you know, for me, just being able to get together and do that event and um, you know see everybody <laughs> supporting it was was an awesome awesome moment. There was hope there. <laughs> I love it. I think I'm just going to keep coming back to uh, the yes. You know, that saying yes. I keep hearing this phrase, the year of yes, because last year felt like the year of no. And so Absolutely. for me, I am choosing to say yes in this and to look ahead to 2021 and say, what can I do? Not what am I not allowed to do, but what can I do? Because when we see the numbers and we see where things are at, we are the people that can get out there and make a difference in this, continue to fuel the, um, the fundraising for research, for patient services. And so I'm super excited to be able to be part of this. And I'm super excited to be able to relay, even though we're many, many states away in Washington and Alabama. I just want to say thank you to your team for everything you guys have done. Even. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so grateful for you. So thank you for this today. Thanks for taking time to go through these questions and uh, for being part of this as we look ahead to 2021.